Good morning, good morning. I hope everyone's Christmas was fantastic. Was it? Great, because the Lord blesses us each and every day, not just on Christmas, right? So let's let's stand together, if you wouldn't mind. And greet your neighbor to your left and to your right. Wave to him in the house of the Lord this morning. <laughs> oh. Right now, church, I'd like to ask you to just prepare your hearts because Christmas is, is the season's ending and we're getting ready for a new year, right? So I want us to start getting our hearts right now in, in the mindset that we've got a new year ahead of us and the possibilities for God just didn't end at Christmas. God's possibilities will continue on through 2021. Amen? Amen. Amen. If, uh, if you could grab your Bibles and open up to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I want to read, I believe it's thir uh, 31 with you, 1031. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. I know everyone knows this verse, and I've probably opened up service before with it, but I always like to remind myself. Of this verse. When you get there, say amen. Let's do it. First Corinthians reads So whatever you so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Amen. We got a new year ahead of us. Like I said, the possibilities of, of what God can do in your life just didn't just end. Even it won't end at December 31st. It doesn't end today. The possibilities for what God has in store for each and every one of us, for the Harvest Church family, will not end. It's unlimited. Because God is unlimited. We can't put God in a box. This year might have not been the greatest for anybody. It might have been great for some. But we have our Lord with us. And that means there is so much more we can conquer, so much strength we can dive into. The blessings of God just continues to flow. We are all here right now, so we are blessed, church. Amen? Amen. So let us prepare our hearts today, knowing that 2021 is a year of possibilities. Amen? Amen. Let us go to him in prayer. Father, Whatever we do, whatever your body, your church family, when we come together, whatever we decide to do, Father, we do it to your glory. Let us come and remember that. When we gather together, we're not here for ourselves. We're here to glorify your name. We're here to glorify who you are and the strength and the courage you give us each and every day. And Father, I ask you to continue every moment, every second, to continue to pour out your spirit upon your family today. Everyone who has gathered together to worship your name, pour out your spirit upon them. Ignite that flame within their soul for a hunger for you, for a hunger for your love. Father, I ask your anointing upon Pastor Darren this morning as he leads us into your presence. Let us break through all the chains we have today, Let, holding nothing back from worshiping you, breaking through those chains, Father, to worship you with all that we have. Let us glorify your name today, tomorrow, Tuesday, and the rest of the week. In all that we do, Father, let us glorify you. Father, I thank you for all these things. In your holy and precious name, I pray. Amen. 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 Merry Christmas to everyone. And I hope you all had a wonderfully blessed Christmas day and this whole Christmas season. Does anybody have a reason to bless the Lord? He's wonderful, right? He's glorious. Hallelujah. We have reasons for him. Bless his holy name. worship you, Lord.
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. And whatever may pass, and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, oh, I'll worship Your holy name. in love and you're slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy, oh we worship Your name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Oh, we worship your name, sing like never before. Oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. On that day, when my strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forevermore Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, my soul I'll worship, worship Your holy name. I will worship your holy name. I will worship your holy name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We just worship you, Lord. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. I'll 
worship your your holy name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We do worship you, Lord. You are our King. You are our Lord. I thank you for all that you've done. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I am forgiven that he paid it all for us. And I'm accepted, you were condemned, and I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven, because you were forsaken, oh, I'm accepted. Oh, and you work in day. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know, oh, I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. And I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. And I'm accepted, you work in day. And I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be? Oh, that you, my king. Lord, you paid it all for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy, oh, my joy to honor you, Lord, in all I do. I honor you in all I do. Jesus, you are my King. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die? Oh, you died for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy. Lord, I want to honor you in all I do. Amazing love, how can it be? But you, Lord, you came for us all. It's amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you. Lord, in all I do, I honor you. Oh, in all I do, I honor you. Oh, let us honor you in everything. Let every breath praise you, Lord. Let our lives be a praise and worship to you in your holy name. 
Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. I am so glad and great for his gracious and grateful for his amazing grace. What he did for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. was lost but now I'm found was blind but oh I see it was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved I'll pray just did that grace appear the hour oh I first believe and my chains are gone oh I've been oh I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood, oh, it rains, unending love, amazing grace. Mm. Oh, we just put, stand on your promises, Lord. Is the Lord has promised, He's promised good to me, and His word my hope secures. He will my shield oh, and portion be as long as life endures. And my chains are gone, oh, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, you've ransomed me. And like love, His mercy reigns, it's unending love and amazing grace. And my chains are gone, oh, I've been set, I've been set free, my God. Oh, you're my Savior, you ransomed me, and like a flood, oh, it rains, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below, He will be forever mine will be forever mine because you are forever mine just come on and praise him he is forever ours we are lost without him we are nothing without him and his grace his love his mercy thank you lord 
We glorify you. We worship you. Hallelujah to your precious name. You, you alone are worthy, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am so glad that one day forever he will be ours and we will be with him face to face forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated, church. So with Sunday, we have coming up in a couple days, Wednesday. So I asked the church, what do we do on Wednesday nights? Harvest together. Harvest together, yes, harvest together. I, I expect a little bit more people to sound off, but that's okay. Uh, no, so Wednesday nights we have our Bible study, and I want to encourage everyone who's here and those who are watching at home, come participate, come join us as the family gets together and as we uh, go through the, the word of the Lord and as we w watch a video and we have a, uh, as deep of discussion as we possibly can. Um, and I know pastor wants you to ask all the questions and answer all his questions as much. The, the vote. I, anybody been in some training sessions to where the trains go longer if, if people don't respond? Anybody that ever been there? So, sometimes that happens, and I know Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking at him right now because I, I don't know, want to see his face, but, you know, he, he's there to try to help us and spur questions that we may have or answer the questions and hopefully uh, making sure that we're realizing that we're paying attention to the, the lesson, right? It's all good teachers, right? We, we just hope our people that are gathered together hope we are paying attention. Uh, so I want to encourage everyone, come on out and, and answer all the questions pastor has for us and ask questions because that's the time as the church get together. If you no no stupid questions uh, that you may have, even, even as seasoned adults and, and those who are wise beyond our years, we still have questions that someone else may have the answer to, right? Um, and, and that's a great opportunity for, for us when we get together on Wednesday nights is to ask the questions we may have, especially when uh, right now because we're working on Tony Evans, uh, he, the knowledge he has may be a little bit more deeper than even Pastor Phil ha may have. And so, you know, I may have a question. I should ask Pastor, hey, Pastor, if Tony Evans said this, uh, what about that? Pastor, what about that? So... Uh, I want to encourage everybody. Anybody know what time we meet on, on Wednesday nights? So, not Sister Flora. I'm sorry? 7 o'clock. Okay. Sorry, Sister Flora. <laughs> 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights. If you don't have the information to come join us, please see myself or Pastor immediately following service. Uh, that way we can get your email. We'll send you the link. So all you got to do is click on the link in an email, and it'll pop up as long as you've downloaded Zoom. If you don't have Zoom, uh, let me know, and I will work you through step by step on how to download and get Zoom uh, on your computer, on your phone, or on your tablet. I've been here before, after service, trying to help people out. I will do it again until everybody who needs to know knows how to use Zoom. Okay? Church, it's a great time. I want to encourage everybody. And then also, outside of that, we do have our prayer list. Pastor put this together this morning, so... Um, Grab it. It's on the, the welcome table. Please grab it and, and pray. Continue to pray over our church uh, and continue to pray uh, for the church. Uh, we're getting prepared, Pastor, uh, for prayer and fasting as the new year comes. Uh, Pastor will have more information about that uh, later on, uh, maybe next Sunday. But if we, don't, uh, if we don't start preparing our hearts and our minds right now for it, um, we may miss out. So it, we may be praying and fasting for the 14 days, 21 days. I don't know how, ma how many days. Pa 14 days, yes, I thought it was 14. But if we're just praying on those, we could miss out. Uh, why not always just pray continually? I think that's what the Bible says, right? Pray without ceasing uh, and always be in a, a state of mind of prayer and communion with our Lord and Savior, right? Amen. Pastor? That's right. Amen. I do want you to be getting your hearts ready for this 
14 days of prayer and fasting. Um, I believe God moved not just in our lives, but in lives that we were praying for and places we were praying for when we did it over the summer. So I believe God blesses those who diligently seek him. So that's what we want to be doing. We want to be diligently seeking him in prayer. Well, guess what time it is? It's offering time in the house of God. Yes. I don't know about you, but I am joyful. Joyful that God gives me the opportunity to worship him in so many different ways. There was this young man that was eager to grow in his Christian life. So one day he decided to get this piece of paper and he wrote out and made a list of all the things that he would do for God. He wrote down all the things that he would give up and the places that he would go to minister and the areas of ministry he would enter. He was so excited. He took that list to the church and put it on the altar. He thought he's going to feel some joy. He's going to be so ready. But instead he felt empty. So he went home and started adding to the list. He wrote down more things that he would do and things that he wouldn't do. He took that longer list and put it on the altar, but he still felt nothing. He went to his wise, seasoned pastor, told him the situation, and asked for help. The pastor says, take a blank sheet of paper, sign your name at the bottom, and put that on the altar. The young man did, and finally peace came to his heart. See, God wants us to totally give ourselves to him without restrictions. We don't put a list and say, God, I'll do this for you, but I'm, I'm not going to do that for you. He wants to be able to use us, guide us, and bless us as he sees fit. The only way he can do that is if we give him everything. We trust him in everything, knowing that he will supply every need that we have. Amen? Father, I just want to thank you. Lord, we just do open ourselves up and we give it all to you. Whatever it is, we trust you that you will handle it, that you will take care of it. So, Lord, we give it all to you. We're not holding anything back. We're not restricting you, Lord. We're just saying, Lord, we are your vessel. So bless us, use us, do whatever you want, Lord, for your glory. And we thank you for this opportunity to give to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come and give unto the Lord. Lord. Would you stand with me, please? Turn to Isaiah, the ninth chapter. I'm going to read verse 2 and then verse 6 and 7. It says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Isn't that amazing? We are all walking in darkness at one point. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Christ is our light. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. He'll be called Wonderful Counselor. He'll be called Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Father, I just want to thank you again for sending your son. Jesus, I thank you for giving yourself, coming to this earth to be ridiculed, to be beaten, to be crucified. But Lord, to take on our sins and then to rise again, giving us eternal life. Thank you. Thank you for coming and being that for us and being so much more. 
then in our daily lives we have you, our hope, in everything. So we ask you to touch our hearts today. Lord, let us be open to your peace, your strength. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today we're going to go through the last of the series that I've been doing on, on the names given to Jesus in Isaiah 9. You know, we started out talking about Jesus being our wonderful counselor. You know, being the one that's our guide and the one that, that helps light our path or lights our path in life as we walk. Then we also spoke about Jesus being our mighty God. And he's the one that gives us the strength, the power, and the spiritual vitality to be able to, to do all that we need to do. All that we need to live and to do for him in this chaotic world. Last Sunday we talked about Jesus being our everlasting father. We emphasize how Jesus is the perfect example of manhood, fatherhood. Someone that can inspire you to, to, to live like that and to know that he will never, ever fail you. So tomorrow, this morning we're going to complete this series and talk about Jesus is our Prince of Peace. How many need peace? This world needs peace. You know, when we talk about peace, I'm kind of reminded sometimes of a, of a uh, there's a movie called The Princess Bride. And if you've never seen the movie, it's a, it's a character-driven type fantasy about, it's a comedy with a lot of one-liners and memorable characters. But one of them is always correcting what the other people say with a phrase, you keep using that word, but I don't think you know, really know what it means. Well, sometimes that word peace can be just like that. If you were going to go out, if you just decided to go out and go to 100 people and you talk to them and ask them, can you give me a definition of the word peace? You'd probably get, a, even though it's 100 people, you'd probably get 400 definitions of peace. They'd be giving you every different kind of thing. But I, I want to clear up some of what some of the world and a lot of what the world thinks of as peace today. I want to explain this multifaceted word, peace, and what it truly means in the eyes of God. Since God is the source of all existence, all reality, shouldn't we go to Him? Shouldn't we go to Him about words like this to find out really what does peace truly mean, God? I want to give you a little bit of background. I've been giving you a little bit of history about uh, the Jewish nation, Israel, during the Isaiah prophecy time, during that time. He was speaking to people, and this was a people that for the last 100 years really did not know any sort of peace. I told you before about the northern kingdom of Israel being in a constant state of war. It's constantly going because of the rebellion and the disobedience that they had against God. But over and over and over again, God sends people, known as prophets, to warn them of the coming disaster. And guess what? Over and over again, what do they do? They reject the prophet's words. Sometimes even kill them. Then disaster strikes and their nation is overrun by another nation. Constant. It's like rinse, wash, repeat. Rinse, wash, repeat. I mean, it's all the time. This has been the life, think about it, this has been the life that they've been living during Isaiah's lifetime and previous to that. This is the way it's been all the time. Never really having any peace. But see, that's just a little brief background to the kind of people that Isaiah was actually trying to talk to. These are people who longed for some sense of peace in their lives. You know, for them, I think peace would just simply mean the absence of conflict. If we just didn't have a war, we'd be good. I mean, you find people like that. They are so deep in problems and issues. If they just had one day of no problem, not even something that was just nothing, they would feel even more at peace. 
some of them feeling like if they could just have a little sense of security, they would feel peaceful. But see, that's so often how the world looks at peace, especially today. How many times in this last year have you turned on the news to hear about a shooting or a terrorist attack or what just happened in Nashville? One of the things I, I think I hear most often when, when I hear about these things coming up in the news is a sentiment that you, you, you hear people kind of think of, can't we just all get along? You know, it seems like in today's culture that if you have an opinion about something and there's always someone somewhere who's ready and willing to destroy you just for voicing it. That's not peace. Even our elected officials, people who are supposed to be leading us, really aren't any better. This last year, it feels like we kind of regressed almost to the kind of drama we have in middle school and in high school. People just uh, against each other. But do you know what the good news really is? Is that God desires us to live in peace. See, peace, though, is not just the absence of conflict. I want to give you a little illustration here. About 400 years before the events that Isaiah had happened, Israel was facing a similar problem. Neighboring nations, they're coming in, they're killing them, they're plundering them, they're just destroying them. These people began to cry out to God, help us, we need your mercy, deliver us from this, this conflict and this war. And in comes a man called Gideon. I told you about him. And God uses him to deliver the people. Now, in early Old Testament religious thought, it was believed that anyone who was visited by God in a physical presence would immediately be killed. So Gideon, I'm, I'm, I can just imagine his thought when God comes to him. He's probably terrified. He's thinking, I'm going to drop dead right here. I'm done for. But God quickly reassures Gideon that he's not going to die. In fact, and in thankfulness and reverence to God, Gideon, what does he do? He builds an altar. And what does he call it? Yahweh Shalom. God is peace. That's probably one of the most precious names of God there is. Peace. God included this interaction between himself and Gideon in the Bible. And it helps us to understand that he not only brings peace, but he is the very essence of peace. You know what that means for us today in this 21st century where things are going crazy? Because it, it, it lets us know that we can never really truly know peace apart from God. Apart from God, whose name, whose nature, whose character is fully all peace. I want you to think about that for just a moment. I mean, really think about that. Think about the things that are going on in your life. Think about the conflicts that's happening. Think about the issues you're going on and you're wondering about. The only way to get peace through those is through God. If you really start to think about it, if you truly understand that concept and the implications of your life, what that has for you, that baby in that manger becomes much more special. Jesus, the one who can clear up the conflict, clear up the chaos. You know, in our world today, this 21st century world, we have a lot of chaos that's going on. And it's a result of humanity trying to realize peace apart from the true source of peace. You think about humanity. They are constantly in constant pursuit of some sense of peace. Everything we pursue in life, whether it be pleasure, power, money, or position, it's all at the root yearning 
for peace and security. There's so many who fall prey to Satan's schemes of this false peace in life. Ultimately, they are looking for peace and trying to find it, some of them, in a substance. There's some that are large corporate uh, companies with vice presidents who are having heart attacks at, at early age because they're working 80, 90 or more hours a week in this high pressure cooker job, stress job. See, they're looking for peace, thinking that that's going to give them peace. If I get to this position, then I've got it. Everything's okay. There's people who have an entire paycheck of cash in their wallet on Friday, and by Monday it's gone because they were at the casino. They're looking for peace through that money. Thinking, if I could just win this, and I win all this money, I don't have any more problems. I'm at peace. You know, most tragically, there's people who shipwreck marriages, who ruins children's lives, ruins reputations, even churches, just because of the pursuit of pleasure. Thinking that's what's going to give them peace. Do you know what these people illustrate in their life is common with all humanity? Everyone. We never learn or refuse to acknowledge that we can never find peace in a created thing. It's impossible. I can't find peace in a tablet that I'm sitting there staring at and playing or doing all day or reading all day. I'm not going to find peace in that. I'm not going to find peace in buying a new car or a new house. I'm not going to find peace in that. If you want to find peace, you've got to go to the Creator, whose very name is peace. Jesus knows this. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Just consider this world, that this little baby in Bethlehem's manger was born into. See, Jesus was born into a world where the country had been subjugated for over 500 years to Assyria, to Babylon, to, to Persia, to the Greeks, and now the Romans. All of them conquered them. All of them placed them under their rule. And even worse, the, the religious establishment was about as far from God as you could think. So see, there was, very, there was just very little true worship of God seen even in the temple. In fact, going to the temple only ensured that the very people that were supposed to be pointing us to worship, to, 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 to pointing us to a holy God that we would worship, were fleecing and cheating the people out of every penny they could get. I mean, even this world... Even the people around there would have considered Jesus an illegitimate child. Knowing that Joseph was not his actual biological father. You think about that. Think about that stain. Think about that thought of what they would think. I mean, you weren't even considered a full member of society if that was part of your life. If that was the kind of background you had. But here we have God becoming a man Jesus a helpless baby sleeping in a borrowed stable instead of and in a feeding trough of an animal Jesus a helpless baby in a manger less than 10 miles from an evil ruler who has an army that wants him dead think about that this is the world that the prince of peace was born into We can look at all that and then look at ours today. Hasn't changed a whole lot, has it? Not much difference. Just more ways to pe put people under rule. More ways to hurt people. More ways to cause no peace. I mean, if you think about it, 
That phrase, Prince of Peace, probably means as much today as it did back in that time or even when Jesus was born. But for those that really know it, know that this world needs the Prince of Peace. Needs it more than ever. More than anything we need. Jesus. He's the answer. The answer to it all. I want everyone to just close your eyes for a moment. And asking in the present God in the presence of God, what I want you to do is take a deep breath and then let it out. And then allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. Let him show you all the things that you're fighting against. All the struggles that you're facing. Let him expose everything that seems you're fighting against. And then I want you to ask Jesus to be your Prince of Peace. Jesus. Lord, be our Prince of Peace. Whatever the struggle, whatever the problem, whatever the situation, even if it continues, we still can have peace if we're in you. That's the beauty of Christmas. It's a time that we can stop and pause and reflect on the wonder of a baby prince coming into this world during such a chaotic time in history. There may be some here today that are struggling with worry, struggling with whether you believe God can help you or if he will help you. I just want you to think about this. A moment ago, I mentioned that Jesus was born into a world where about 10 miles away, there was this insane king who wanted to kill him. Yet God wasn't worried. When he grew up, Jesus would face religious establishment that's so far removed from what God truly wanted. And they even conspired aspired together to murder him but God wasn't worried Jesus faced unbelief he faced ridicule in his own town that same hometown that that some may have thought of him as being an illegitimate child but God wasn't worried Jesus ministered to people who have been conquered for over 400 years he himself under the rulership of of a man named Caesar who commanded people to even worship him. But that still didn't faze him and it didn't make him worry. Why? Because he knew who he was. See, he is the Prince of Peace. He is our source of all peace. He was and he still is and will forever be the answer to every problem we have. There is nothing that's in your life that you can't take to him. Nothing. Please get that out of your mind if that's in your mind. Nothing. Too small or too big, it does not matter. You can take it to him. And he will give you peace about it. See, he wants to give us peace. He wants to make it so that we, it's not that we're like, oh, I don't have a care in the world. I don't want to think about it. No, there's things that are still happening. And then we may have to go through some difficult times. But when you know that Christ is with you, when you know I'm going to get through it, not, not sitting there going, I wonder if I'm going to get through it. No, I know I'm going to get through it because Jesus is with me. That has to be peaceful. That has to bring something peace to your mind to know that from here to there, that is so hard for me to get through, but I'm going to get through it because God's with me. 
I'm going to get to that other side. He wants to give us this peace so we can experience true joy of the Lord. I want you to stand with me, please. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Because Jesus is our Prince of Peace. I want you to bow your heads and Close your eyes. I, I just want to know, and I'm not picking out anybody. I'm not trying to do that. But I want to see who that I can put in my mind to pray for. But if there's situations, if there's something that you truly need peace from God in, I just want you to raise your hand. Thank you, Lord. Say, we are a bunch of us looking for peace. And he's the only one that can truly give it to us. The only one. Lord, I'm, I'm asking right now. If there's ones watching and those that are here. If they're struggling, if they're having, wondering, where am I? I mean, they need answers, Yes. But during that time of waiting on those answers, they need peace to know that you're in control, to know and know that they're going to get an answer in whatever way it is, whether it's yes, no, or wait, or whatever it is, Lord. But let them have peace and strength and joy during that wait time, during that time that you're preparing them, whatever the situation is, Lord. I'm praying right now that those who need you will turn to you right now and say, I need your peace. Even if I still have to keep going through this, I need your peace knowing that I'm going to get through it. You're going to walk with me every step of the way and maybe carry me at times. But you're going to be there, Lord. Lord. Because you said you would never leave us. You would never forsake us. You will always be there. We just have to turn to you. We have to trust in you. See, there's a, a, a thing that we have to do first. And that's trust and put everything in God. And then his peace will, his Holy Spirit will envelop us in peace. We will have comfort. We will have joy. We will have strength. All because Jesus came for us came as a baby to be the perfect spotless lamb to take away the sins of the world. Thank you, Jesus, for being our wonderful counselor, our mighty God, our everlasting father, our prince of peace. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. Oh, let your peace fall in this place. Let it fall in the lives of your people. Let it cover them. Let it touch this nation and this world. We know the end times. We know that there's going to be chaos. We know that there's going to be problems. That is what ushers in the ending parts and the different ones that all of it Lord but Lord we still can live in peace through you during it all we can live in peace because you are our hope thank you thank you thank you for coming for us for creating us for making us and for giving us a way to be with you forever so, Lord, help us to be all that we can be for you. 
Let the words of our mouth, let the meditations of our heart, Lord, let all of it, everything we do, let it be acceptable in your sight. Because you are our redeemer, you're our strength. Lord, you're our peace. And we thank you for this in Jesus' precious, holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. God is wonderful. He is mighty. Yes, come on. He is our Prince of Peace. I hope you go out of here with a renewed mind of understanding God is. Jesus is our peace. Just rely on Him. Look to Him. Stand on Him. He's the rock that we can stand on. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I hope you all have a great and blessed week. And I, if those that we can, we will see on Wednesday on our Zoom. But if not, we will see you in the new year. <laughs> I will be putting online the sign up for it. Hopefully I'll have it on by tomorrow sometime that you can sign up for our prayer and fasting. Um, we're just going to be doing from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. every single day. Uh, and I'll be giving you, I'll probably sending out emails and stuff with the different prayer themes for it. So just make sure you're getting your heart ready to let God do a mighty work in us, in this church, and in this nation. Amen. We're going to start it on the third, on the Sunday, and go for 14 days. Yes. So. I believe the third is the Sunday. So we're going to be starting it then. Um, but you will have everything this week with you to know what we're doing and everything. So I just want you to be ready to pray. Thank you.